Call the meeting to order. Please rise for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the mayor will sing us a song. Oh, that'll be exciting. <laughs> no, he won't. No, he won't. Okay, just make a note that... Uh, Councilman Brungard is absent. Everybody else is present. Um, we'll go with old business approval of minutes. Regular meeting minutes of August 4th, 2022 are attached. I need a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of August 4th, 2022 as presented. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Call the roll. Mr. Garvey? Yes. Mr. Bueller? Yes. Mr. Clemens? Yes. Mr. Stednica? Yes. Mr. Trinkle? Yes. Mr. Kirby? Yes. Mr. Major? Same. Motion passed. Audience participation. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the council on an item that is not on the agenda? Uh, what are the agendas? Could I, could I address the uh, council sure. after the meeting? Open mic? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you can do that yeah. now. Oh, oh, um, okay. Just come on up and state your name and your address and tell us what you'd like to tell us. Jeff Shugart, 110 Ferncliff Street, Lansing, I guess that should be well known. <laughs> uh, well, there's one complaint that I have, and that is the speed limit on East Mary Street from 4th Street for about four blocks. I think it should be increased to 30 miles an hour, and that's one of the things. And then I'd like to give an attaboy, and I don't know if it's to this console, but for the building of trails, no, not trail, I'm sorry, Angel Falls Trail. That, has, that is a very used, highly used trail. And in fact, it's a destination trail. I've seen people from mm -hmm. Leavenworth, I've seen people drive just to walk that trail and everything. I think that's I one of the that. good things. And maybe you could add more. And then one other item, and that is the... Uh, Pool. I'm glad to see that you're building a pool. I was a little bit confused, though. I saw a for sale sign on the, let's see, between Bittersweet and West Mary, right there across from the, is that land for sale, or is that where you were planning to put the pool? I think that property, you're looking at, it's under contract. Oh, by the city or by someone else? under contract it's, it's an, <laughs> oh top secret okay <laughs> all right thank thanks you. jeff well, yeah thank you for Mom, your mom's word <laughs> mom's word okay there's gonna be a vote for the pool yes yeah yeah, yeah. we're not going to build a pool just yet yeah if the vote passes we will yes. build a pool yes if, if they pass it. oh if i can add one more item i sure. am glad you are Putting that on the ballot, I will be a positive vote for that, and I will probably be using it because it's right in my neighborhood area and everything. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks for coming, <clears throat> sir. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. All right. New business. Num item number two is Ordinance 1086, Court Fines and Fee Schedule. This ordinance establishes the fines and fee schedule for municipal court, and these changes must be adopted by ordinance in order to implement Made a motion to approve Ordinance 1086, adopted by the City of Lansing Municipal Court Fines and Fee Schedule. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Does this put us in with all the other cities, basically, with their their fees and everything? I mean, that's what we've been. I thought that's what we've been trying to do all along. Get them all. Get them all in line with like that. Whatever. Yeah, believe everybody's the same. These would be set by the municipal court judge, and I think he has guidelines that he has to do. So, I mean, we, our fees shouldn't be way out of whack from other places. Is that your understanding as well, yeah. Beth? Really, the only fee we're changing is the intake fee and the impound fee, and that's because the Humane Society has increased their fees, and we're basically a pass-through. So, we, people who have their animal taken there, they come in and pay that fee, and then we turn around and they bill us for the same amount, so just to cover the cost of that, that increase. 
I knew I thought that's what we were trying to become <clears throat> standard with everybody else on about everything that we're doing, you know, building codes and all. And I thought maybe yeah, we just happens. we just charge people what yeah. we get charged. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, and this is court fines and fees and things like that. That's set by Judge Fuller. Yeah. Yeah. In the state. And this is every year. We do this every year. Yes. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah, There's any did. changes? Yeah. Did, did we add the driving under influence, driving an airplane because all the other cities had one? Well, there was that kid that landed on the interstate in Can on the other side of Kansas City a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Landed his plane and he was hammered. Like so he was like 26 years old, 24 years old, young guy. So those fees we aren't. We aren't arbitrarily adding. That's that is driven by state, by state mandates and, and fees that they've in, included into those fee schedules. We're just updating ours to match the states. Right. So I mean, you can either go through and make your own ordinance and change all of those fines and fees, or you adopt the ordinance that's put forth by the state. Yeah, but this this one is on court fines and, and fees, and we're going to get to the the one you're addressing in a few minutes. We're that's the traffic. Not there yet. That's the traffic coordinate. Yeah. Oh. yeah, we haven't got to that part yet. Yeah. Okay. Any any other discussion on this one? Okay, I have a motion and a second. Call a roll. Mr. Garvey? Yes. Mr. Bueller? Yes. Mr. Clemens? Yes. Mr. Studnicka? Yes. Mr. Trinkle? Yes. Mr. Kirby? Yes. Mr. Mayor? <clears throat> yes. Okay, motion passed. Item number three is ordinance ten eighty seven. 2022 edition of the Standard Traffic Ordinance for Kansas City's 49th edition. This ordinance adopts the annual Standard Traffic Ordinance published by the League of Kansas Municipalities with changes outlined in the ordinance. I need a motion to approve the ordinance number 1087, adopting the 2022 Standard Traffic Ordinance for Kansas City's 49th edition. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this one? Yes, I do. Go ahead, Marcus. Right. So uh, going through all of them, one of them that I talked to you, Tim, about was the, um, the, the disobeying crosswalk with pedestrian in the crossing or something like that. I thought there was something in all of those, and I did not find anything like that. So there really isn't a fine that would penalize or ticket someone for speeding through a crosswalk with pedestrians in the crosswalk. So I I think there is. I mean, I think a lot of this stuff is just the updates. So once the council updates it, we have these books that all of our officers, yep. you know, go through and everything. Um, in that section that you had shown me. Um, they been, you probably know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it's, w what you had shown me was legit. The, the thing that the chief and I had spoken about a little bit with that item, it, that section that you'd shown me continues and it kind of talks about how there's there's also responsibility on the pedestrian. Right. Like if it's bumper to bumper traffic, the pedestrian shouldn't right. be walking on the crosswalk. Right. Um, but uh, but no, I mean I I think that's that's on the books, but that's not changing. So. so without going through like four or five of these things that I went through and identified, my question would be that the, the fine should be increased, you know. Um, one of them was reference, you know, obeying construction zone signs. Failure to obey construction zone signs turn into construction zone workers being killed, yeah. you know, in the line of duty and so forth. And that fine was real small. Illegal parking in handicapped space. That fine was like $50. That, to me, that just annoys the crap out of me. Someone parking in a handicap without an official handicap should be fined 500 to to $1,000, not a little $50 ticket. But if these fines parking parking in a no parking zone, yep. that should be a high fine too, and that's on page seven out of ten. <clears throat> but these are just four of them that I picked out. Now, if these are if these fines are in with the other cities, I get it. But if we have any kind of adjustment for these kind of fines for a few of these things, then my recommendation is is that we immediately look at. Someone parking in a handicap or parking in a no parking zone should be paying a lot more than like a fifty or a ninety dollar fine. Yeah, just, I, just my opinion. Yeah, no, I, you know, honestly, that I don't think that's come up recently. So I, 
I guess we could talk to Judge Fuller about that, or I'm, I'm not sure what the procedure would be. Well, this is just a standard traffic offense that, yeah. you, you know, that you can adopt. And I think the league does a, a good job at making sure that like, the municipalities are all kind of in conformity. But, yeah, you can certainly pick and choose certain things if you choose to do so. You know, like, for example, I'm not saying we would because it's very freezing, but you could take the DUI or OUI statute out of the local ordinance and everything would go to the county. Then again, any and all fees then would be collected by the yeah. county, go to the state instead of yeah. staying, staying here. here. So, yeah. so there's things you can do if you choose to do so. So, do we have the ability to adjust any speed limits since Mr. Shukart is here? Can we discuss that or I, do we have to have a work session? Or no, I, I think on arterials, I thought we needed some type of at least basic engineering study or, or speed study, kind of seeing what the the, the last, speeds are, well, I, the I last, believe. The last discussion I had with League on that very issue was a, it's been a number of years ago because it would always talk about traffic studies. Yeah. Obviously, the concern was always traffic studies cost money. However, the League at that time was Sandy Jack, Jack, I think I pronounced her name correctly. Um, she had indicated that that could be a matter of patrol officer sitting out there taking you know samples and logging them down on a daily basis so you can determine what the kind of average speed of the number of cars, you know, those kind of things. It'd be kind of labor intensive. You're yeah. putting your officer out there to sit on one spot as opposed to a official traffic study, uh, but it would be cheaper. But it would give you a basis to then act on what you want to do. And maybe the one that's jumping out at me was more so because we got grant, grant dollars, but I remember when we adjusted to Soto Road, didn't that increase either five miles an hour oh, or ten miles an hour? You uh, guys remember? Five to forty. Yeah, I think I think we did do it was like a two thousand dollar engineering study where it was somebody who who wasn't affiliated with the city. They were looking at the speeds, looking at the sight lines and the width of the road and all of that stuff. But you know maybe that that might have just been because we were getting grant dollars from the state. But but I can talk to Public Works about that and, and figure that out. Okay, because I, I see. His, I mean, I get his point. Yeah, because I mean I know the schools there, but you do it school time like we, we do had. With all we the had a big schools. controversy about that stretch of road he's talking about years ago because we had we had most of our school zones down to 15 miles an hour, and the state statute was 20 miles an hour. So whatever we adjusted everything so that it was 20 miles an hour through there <clears throat> because of the school, and then just when you get on the other side of it, there's a speed sign that says it goes to 35 to go on right. out past the old law stadium. There. All right. Well, if we can look into and, it. And, yeah. some, and some cities even go as far as to what Don's point is, um, would be when children are present. Because sometimes the school hours, are, and nobody's around, and so people right. tend to want to, hey, there's no kids here, and they can pick up. So you can actually write in your ordinances that, you know, it's like when children are present. Now, you know, I, I'm not advocating for that, but I'm just saying that's an option. Well, that's like what we well, there's one at on West Lutheran Mary. Church. We, 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 we put in the... Uh, the blinking lights, you know, and when they're blinking, you know, it's 20 miles an hour. And when they're not blinking during the summer, it's about 30, 35 through there, whatever. Right. So, yeah. but, some, but some school districts don't want to adjust their signs. Like if there's a holiday and school's not in session, yeah. the light will still flash even though school's not in session. Mm, right. I've seen that. Like Linwood, if you go 32 Highway. And that's yeah. happened over here, too. Right. It, that's happened. I, it, I just, I was just curious and yeah. to see what we need to do to look into it. Yes. Yeah. We can definitely look into it. Absolutely. Yeah, we can have. Yep. I, I disagree, I disagree with Marcus in. about these fines. I think those are non-moving violations. I know I, it's it's a bad thing to park in a handicapped spot. I'll agree with you with that. I would never do it. But a fifty dollar fine for that for me would would teach me a lesson not to do it again. Not a hundred dollar. <laughs> I'm not a rich man, Marcus. <laughs> but, uh, well, and the but, flip side is, you're going to make it 500, or, you, or is somebody going to be able to pay the price? Right. No, right. I was being. If, if it's somebody that doesn't well, make no, a I, lot of money, I, I, I agree bucks with a lot you. I, them. I, I get irritated right. when I see people parking them, but you know, what are you going to do? Anything else, Did Greg? Did you have something else, or nope. is that it? I, okay. He answered my question. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, we have a motion and a second. Call the roll. Mr. Garvey. Yes. Mr. Bueller? Yes. Mr. Clemens? Yes. Mr. Studnicka? Yes. Mr. Trinkle? Yes. Mr. Kirby? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Motion passed. Item number four is ordinance number 1088, 2022 edition of the Uniform Public Offense Code for Kansas City's 38th edition. 
This ordinance adopts the annual Uniform Public Offense Code published by the League of Kansas Municipalities. I need a motion to approve Ordinance 1088 adopting the 2022 Uniform Public Offense Code for Kansas City's 38th edition. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this one? Got a lot of ordinances tonight. Okay, no discussion. Go ahead and call the roll. Mr. Garvey? Yes. Mr. Bueller? Yes. Mr. Clemens? Yes. Mr. Sednica? Yes. Mr. Trinkle? Yes. Mr. Kirby? Yes. Mr. Mather? Yes. Motion passed. Item number five is executive session for personnel matters of non-elected personnel. So I need a motion to go into executive session to discuss personnel matters pursuant to non-elected personnel matters exception KSA 75 4 Three one nine Bravo one for five minutes, beginning at seven sixteen, and ending at seven twenty one. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Call a roll. Mr. Garvey. Yes. Mr. Bueller. Yes. Mr. Clemens. Yes. Mr. Stednicka. Yes. Mr. Trinkle. Yes. Mr. Kirby. Yes. Mr. Major. Yes. <laughs> call us yes sir. Yeah right. I move to open. Uh, Move to open session. Second. second. I have a motion and a second to return to open session. Call a roll. Mr. Garvey? Yes. Mr. Bueller? Yes. Mr. Clemens? Yes. Mr. Brungard? Oh, sorry. Mr. Sednica? Yes. Mr. Trinkle? Yes. Mr. Kirby? Yes. Mr. Major? Marcus? We're, yes. Uh, motion passed. We're back to open session. Um, so, I will make a statement for the record that no binding actions were taken during the executive session. And with that, I'm going to request a motion to authorize the mayor to sign addendum number six to the city administrator's contract and provide a financial incentive based on the results of the performance evaluation. So moved. Second. Second. I have, I have several motions and seconds. Second the same time. Time. All the roll. Mr. Garvey? Yes. Mr. Bueller? Yes. Mr. Clemens? Yes. Mr. Stednicka? Yes. Mr. Trinkle? Yes. Mr. Kirby? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Motion passed. Reports, um, any department heads? Yeah. And nothing, Captain. All right. All right. City Attorney? Uh, Mayor, the only thing I would say is that we all know <coughs> about the decision on the fire district. However, just from a technical aspect, the mandate was sent back. Okay. Well, thanks. Appreciate that. Tim. The, uh, the contractor's making great progress out at Bernard Park. Uh, over the last week and a half, they've been installing a lot of those new lights, so that's been really exciting. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll try to send you guys some pictures of that coming up. Uh, I put in my report that we were notified last week that the half-ton truck we ordered back in January uh, couldn't be fulfilled. Uh, shortly after we put the agenda out, um, we looked at the, uh, the Main Street website and saw a vehicle that was pretty close to that amount. Uh, we asked the dealership if they would honor the price. So it's basically the same vehicle that we ordered back in January, except it's like a maroon color. I think we'd need to put lighting on top of it. Um, but uh, since it was... Uh, Main Street agreed to honor that price from the bid. Uh, we wanted to be sure you guys were okay with that. Like I said, it's slightly different from the one we bid, but half ton RAM would be used by our building inspector. So wanted to be sure you guys were okay with that. So I mean, it's it's different from what we would normally do. Everyone yep. generally okay with that. Um, and then uh, Mike got me an update on the number of fiber permits that we've issued. Um, thus far on both projects. So ClearWave has received 13 permits, AT&T has received six permits. Um, so I know, it's, I know it's a hassle to our residents, but they're making really good progress. And uh, you know, 
encourage folks to hang in there. They obviously have a financial incentive with those bid bonds to make sure that they restore the yards uh, in a reasonable fashion. Uh, but they are making good progress. That's been nice to see. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's tough, but they will be done soon, I promise you guys. So, um, those are the main things I have, unless there's any questions. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. And we'll go around the horn. So, Jesse, you get to start off. You know, uh, <clears throat> the other night, me and my wife went for a three-and-a-half-mile walk around Ward 3. And uh, <clears throat> we walked down Angel Falls Trail, which is a great place to walk, by the way. Yeah. One thing I did notice that the trees didn't trim. <laughs> No, uh, I mean, we need to get down there and get some trees trimmed back because if you have to duck when you're walking down the trail, that's not a good thing. But uh, the creek is dry as a bone. <laughs> but, uh, and then the rest of the walk, I noticed I was just walking and I just would point out to my wife every code violation I seen as we were walking. That should be the code enforcement. Oh. That seems no, like a you. fun night to walk around. And so her response to me was, well, why don't somebody do something about that? And I said, I don't know the answer to that, sweetheart. So I guess my question, and then one of the ones I noticed and it really irritates me is the fences. You know, six-foot fences that are leaning on other people's properties. You know, they're not, they're not too hard to, to, to miss, you know. The cars parked, <coughs> I went one, two houses that are side by side, one of them had two Jeeps parked in the grass and one of them had a pickup parked clear in the backyard on the property line behind them. Yeah. Now, so that was annoying not only to the people on each side of them, but the people behind it. You know, a, a couple of months ago, we changed the ordinance for the, the campers and the boats being parked on a hard surface. We we're supposed to send out notifications about the change in orders. I haven't seen anything yet on that. You know, I just if yeah. we're if we're gonna adopt these codes and fines, we need to enforce them. Yeah, that's it, just my opinion. No, it's you, a couple things that I'll I'll just mention. So the the fence thing, that's tough because I mean if if there's any type of boundary issue or anything like that, we try not to get involved. So if it's leaning six inches one way or six inches the other, we Right. We don't know the exact property boundary, so we don't get involved in that stuff okay. too much. Um, so Matt and uh, Richard usually send me a, a code enforcement update every couple of weeks. Um, the one thing that is tough, though, I mean, sometimes we'll be working on something and we'll say, hey, you've got seven days to get this cleaned up, or you have 10 days to get this cleaned up. So it's it's possible some of the things you saw we've we've noticed, but... But also, you know, shoot us those addresses and we can check it out. The so. Valley and Fairlane. There's, there, 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 yep. there. Mr. Clemens, yeah. Yeah, yep. that's an eyesore. Yep. A yep. complete eyesore. If I lived in that neighborhood, I, I would put my house in the market. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, okay. oh. No. no. I guess you can't get, yeah, you're not allowed to speak right now. Sorry. Um, um, oh, I yeah. can't speak. No. Not, not right now. You can't. Not when we're speaking. Or should you be called on from here? Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. But, but. That was all I had. I just, I mean, Angel Falls Trail is the treat yeah. term that we just need to be more adamant about enforcing codes for our, our communities or our, our neighboring people who keep their property up aren't yeah. being hindered by the people who are not. No, that's a good point. Yeah. But, uh, but, uh, our, our, and I guess my other question to go along with Angel Falls, we're, we're having the Autumn Festival, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, are we charging for, for uh, land usage this year for, what do you call them? Booths. Booths. Yeah, vendors. For profits are being charged, non profits are not being charged. Okay. I'm, I'm opposed to, to charging for the use of it. I just, I think a lot of those vendors that use that area to make a, a couple of dimes don't make a lot of money. So I would be for letting them use the property for free myself. And you would get more vendors because I remember last year it didn't go down very far before you ran out of vendors. So that's just my opinion. So. Over to. What's that? Oh, it's still an issue for a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all no, I No, we can look thank at that. So thanks, Jesse. Okay, Greg. So, uh, Mr. Shukar, thank you for coming. It's nice. I know you still can't talk, but I just want to say thank you because it's nice to have citizens come and talk to us and tell us what's on their mind. So I appreciate that. And, uh, Mayor, on this day in 1920, the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution which was first submitted to Congress in 1878, took 41 years to get approved, was passed which prohibits any citizen of the United States from being denied the right to vote based on sex. That's all I have, Mayor. Yeah. 
a, a mere 20 That's the way it was in the 20s, Don. Yeah. That's, that's the way it was when I'm not Don sure you was could top. <laughs> or you could top. I've no, Jesse, I've noticed the same things. I've seen boats on, on grass, not hard services. At one house, I saw three pickup trucks and an RV all in the front yard all at once, and they were washing the RV. And yes, it did cover a sidewalk. Uh, but it, on Saturday, I don't know who to call on Saturday. Code enforcement's not working. You know, so I, I don't know if that's something we need to talk about, think about. Yeah. But the parking across here where we had trouble with the semis, yeah. uh, there was an RV and a boat there. I came through to the library and they were pulling through the grass so the boat could be going uphill. I, was, I still personally believe that needs to be a no parking zone. Yeah. Unless it's the property owner. Yeah. Um, what you had said about Saturdays, I, I do want to say I think maybe a couple Saturdays a month he'll come in in the mornings, but I think it's mainly to look for grass clippings and things like that. But but even then it might only be for an hour or two. But that's that's a fair point that, that yeah, we're not out as much on Saturdays. I know when we passed the ordinance on the RVs, we said that he wasn't going to wait for phone calls. He was going to go out and actually look for it. When does that start? Um, I think we were talking about early September because we wanted to give people until after Labor Day to, right. you know, if, if they have one final camping trip this summer. So I, I think we were going to try to be a bit more strict early September. I just want to get it in my mind, you know, yeah. of when it starts. But I mean, I, I know we did send out voluntary notices to ones that were non-compliant. And... I know my neighbor got one. He came and saw me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's everything I had, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Clements, were you referring to a boat that was not hooked to a truck? I am. Okay. It was beyond the front of the house with grass almost up to the top of the wheels. Well, I, maybe I misunderstood. I thought you were talking about it was parked on the city street. No, that was in front of City Hall. Nice here. Is that a boat? A just boat a... and an RV. Well, the reason, okay, I just want to make sure I understood you correctly is because some cities will have an ordinance where if you have a trailer parked on the street, it must be connected to a vehicle. Mm -hmm. right. So that, you know, I've seen that in many cities, especially south of here, where, you know, if it's not hooked to a vehicle, you cannot just leave it sitting on the city street. So, so. Understand. Okay. So I just want to, so you guys have the opportunity that you can discuss that and determine if that's something. I just don't want them transferring the RV from their yard to the city hall. I think that's not right either. Agreed. Don. A uh, couple comments. Uh, one on codes. I'm with Jesse. Uh, we have codes, and I've been pushing for the whole time I've been on the council to enforce our codes. Now, if, if that means code enforcement officer goes out and does the patrol every morning, or every couple of days, that's fine. But there's a lot of stuff that I've called the code guy over last month or so to say, hey, how about going checking this out? He goes, oh, yeah, that's a violation. We, we need to do the letter or do you know, start whatever. So we need to enforce them. That, that's my only comment. Uh, question on the guys putting in AT&T and Clearwave putting in the fiber and they're stringing the new line and all that stuff. Uh, is our city inspector involved with any of that, going out and see what they're doing, how they're doing, when they're finishing up in certain areas, et cetera? Um, a little bit. I know, uh, but I think for the most part, if, if people call us with questions, we'll go out and check it out, like our engineering technician has well, been. I got a, a couple of, the only question I would have about it, the, the, I think it's clear way, they're putting their stuff underground. Uh -huh. You know, they're digging all the holes and putting the boxes in and pulling the tubing through and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, there's been some areas like in my neighborhood, they've, they've been through a couple of weeks ago, they've pretty much got it cleaned up, but there's a couple of areas where they've left, it's still uprooted and whatever, and they haven't come back for a week or so. Yeah. So is, is, I don't know if there's a reason for that or if they forgot that, oh, we got to put a box there and we haven't done it yet. Yeah. No, I don't think they've forgotten. Maybe, maybe they moved to a different part of town or something, but... Kind of like the conduit coming out of the ground. Yeah. Up. Yeah. Uh, and there's you know, a few, like, yeah. Like in the corner, well, I live on a corner lot, so, you know, I had about seven holes dug across my front and side. Mm. Uh, they did back off the easement with their machine and got in the middle of my yard, but I know they'll fix that, so I, I'm not worried about that. But they did leave 
how they pull some of that tubing through, like from across the street or whatever. They use some heavy wire and whatever. Uh, they buried the boxes and everything, but I got on one corner, I got some of this wire just sticking up. So I don't know if they're going to come back and dig that up again yeah. or if they just forgot to clip that off below the ground and bury it or what. I, we can contact ClearWave. ClearWave's been really responsive. Oh, no, I know. I'm just, but I'm so just yeah, asking can, these questions. Yeah, we can give them a call. I, yeah. I just don't know. Other than that, I don't have any, anything else, Mayor. Thank you. All right, thanks, Mayor. Dave. I don't have anything, Mayor. Okay, Dave, thanks. Dean. I don't have anything constructive to add to what's already been said. <laughs> Uh, before we get to Marcus, can we not have maybe just for the council, like um, maybe a monthly summary of what code enforcement actions have taken place so everybody gets a very good, good idea yep. instead of, you know, you see something and then you're like, oh, they're not doing any code enforcement when yep. they could be doing a whole bunch. We're mm -hmm. just not aware of it a lot of times. Oh, so. Yeah. so, I mean, if we can get some kind of like report that we can provide them yep. so they get an idea. That would be helpful. Okay, Marcus. Oh, you're good. No, it's good. Um, so, Tim and, and, and staff, I appreciate you taking care of two of the citizens uh, with the complaints and, uh, and and following up with them that you had two separate instances from the street paving to the yard and the spraying and that kind of stuff. I really appreciate y'all's attention to detail on that. Uh, yep, Clearwave, uh, Clearwave did a number on the yards throughout ward two i mean they really did uh they did the best they could with cleaning it up and and trying to save but no one predicted that uh, july and august we wouldn't get any rain at all i mean we just got our first rain and people were walking outside standing in it going this is what rain looks like you know it's been so long since we got it yeah but uh it, it's coming around and i and i appreciate all the all the attention to it so we got the door hangers that's what i was going to say so clear wave went around and the door hangers are out on all the sign all this in our ward anyway yeah. Uh, with the cost and everything for folks to sign up. Now, I haven't seen anything with AT&T because they didn't put AT&T through there, but I guess they're doing the same thing in the areas where AT&T put in. Is that right? Yeah. I'm sending out postcards. I know that because I got a postcard from them saying that if you wanted fibers in your area, if you want to sign up, click this I website. From I've got the same thing. Clear wave. I've got, got mail mailings from them. It, okay. And again, it, clear wave has been really responsive every time we call them they're they're trying to keep us posted on things um at&t fills out the permits and they do the paperwork but, but beyond that we don't hear anything a lot from them so. okay. yeah okay i mean and in, in all fairness we hired clearwave to put fiber in. yeah so they should yep. they should be responding a little better than <coughs> at&t would be yeah right no yeah. no I, I, I get it i get it all right, well, with that, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn. Second. I have a motion and a second to adjourn. But before we do, Dave, do you want to say something? Yeah, in response to uh, Tony's comment about <coughs> a report being issued upon, you know, we have an issue. Years since I've been on the council, we've tried it in the past, and it's, it's always gotten out of hand or it got dropped or whatever, but if a councilman has an issue with something, it's there's a, we started a sheet. Now that we've got computers, it, before it was a paper jam. I mean, it was we were getting a book of stuff. Yeah. But now that we've got it on the computer, uh, if somebody has a problem with the code, a uh, gentleman here had to deal with the speed limit. And Greg and him talked about it. you know note note that on a on a deal the discussion, and then Greg can bring it up on his computer and look. We used to do all that on paper, and that's where <coughs> back when Mayor Bernard and Mr. Blackwell was um, yeah. you know we stopped that because it got you know it was such a, we were killing a lot of trees. Yeah. But I mean, is that something maybe that we could reinstate with the computer system that we have? You know, if, if a, Councilman has a problem that we could bring it up and and uh, keep abreast. Uh, mm -hmm. It gives give council and gives yep. uh, staff a chance to respond to it. Yeah, you know, and then they can look back on it and see what's being done. And then, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, well, that's a good idea. I, I mean, so there's a place on the website. Fix it, you can go it. to 
Yeah, we have a fix it form. Yeah, fix it form on the website. It, you can go fill it out. Well, up. I know yeah. there's a fix it something form, but I'm talking right, about right. this yeah. is something that if you have an issue about uh, uh, you have a, a neighbor or code somebody in your deals complaining about yeah. something wrong with the sidewalk, has code enforcement you, looked at it? Well, in yeah. response to that look, you know, the, 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 whatever one of the council you, members brought up, you could note it on a. That's something we can look at. I was going to say, actually, I, I think some of the software we purchased maybe a couple of years ago with that COVID money, um, I think that has like a code enforcement side to it, a code enforcement module. Um, I'm not sure if the software only lets us have a few passwords, but I know like a lot of times if I'll email Matt and say, hey, what's going on here? He can pull up a module and say, hey, we were there. June 14th, June 19th, June, yeah. you know, he, so Matt and Richard certainly have that capability. I don't know if we can get eight passwords on that, but um, but I know we have that software for those guys. You know, I, I understand. But, I understand. But, okay, wait a minute. So that's, that's, a, that, that's like a tracking mechanism of yeah. when we actually did stuff. Well, I think what Dave's asking is about is there something that we can just submit something and say, hey, code guy, look at this. Yeah, the, the fix-it form. Fix okay, form. so... Yep. They, so there. probably we might want to say, I don't know if it's in on the website or not, but if there is an issue with code enforcement, you know, anything else, yep. is fix it form. I'm not, I'm not sure that gets. It doesn't tell me it's code enforcement, but <laughs> I'm just saying. I think there's, the yeah. fix it form is to report the situation. I'm talking about if we have a discussion like we're having here about speed limits or. Code enforcement, about about a boat parked on yeah. the sidewalk. Councilman's, it was a councilman's concern, mm -hmm. and it, but it just, like I said, it was working for a while, and I don't yeah. know if Greg remembers it or not, but he got it got paper, it got paper logged. I mean, there there was so many, you know, there was responses to what yeah. the councilman's comments that you know it was. I guess putting councilman's comments on paper is what it ended up being. But it got out of hand because it got there were so many of them. I just wondered if there's anything they can do on the computer to, you know, I think it would answer a lot of questions and there wouldn't yeah. be so much. Uh, so we can follow up with you guys better on things that you yeah, bring up. You know, yeah. I, I mean, it's just an idea. I, yeah. You know, I know I, you ain't got anything else to do. No, we can try to, you know, figure out better ways to, to follow up with you guys on things you bring up. Well, I, yeah. I, okay. I'll say this. When I, have, when I have had code issues and things and I report them to Matt, when I report them to Matt, Matt is very responsive yeah. as to where we're at, yeah. where we're going. And I think sometimes all it is is for you to email Matt right. and he'll tell you what's going on. Yeah. That's all you got to do. Yeah. That's been my experience with him. Yeah. So, I mean, the issues we're having over there on East Eisenhower and he's right on it. And yeah. Yeah. Well, nobody he gets grumpy as you get, though. What? Nobody well, gets as grumpy as you get. Well, okay. I've got a motion and a second <laughs> to adjourn. <laughs> Call the no, roll. We're making, Move on. We're, we're making a mountain out of a molehill. <laughs> okay, that's what we're doing. Actually, we we're making a motion and a second to adjourn if I can get one. Yeah, please. I think we have. We got oh, it. We got motion. Mr. Garvey. Yes. yes. You broke Mr. Mr. Yes. Mr. Clemens. Yes. Mr. Clemens. Yes. Mr. Studnicka. Yes. Mr. Trinkle. Yes. Mr. Kirby. Please. Mr. Mage. Yes. Sorry, I owed him that one.